What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Starlight Digest, special edition, interview edition, right? That's what, that's it's not right. really an episode, but we're doing this. Uh, we are a podcast bringing you line talk and digesting Star Wars topics over a thousand years. This is being recorded on March 27, 2021. I am your host, Darth Moocher. I'm joined here with Scott Solo. Hey, what's up, nerds? We got Bootleg Joe with us. Hey, yo. And a familiar face if you're a star wars fan and, and everybody <laughs> a very familiar face omid abtahi omid i'm sorry omid. Omid. yeah you got it he, second time yeah. he warned you he was gonna mess it yeah. up i am known to butcher names so you're you're a man of your word that's uh, <laughs> keep it real right um yeah. dr pershing is with us today thank you so much man this was um a very exciting announcement when scott uh, his his sister knows you and he went to college yeah. i guess you guys went to uh acting college together or Theater, yeah, you're in the theater program. Theater, okay, yeah, yeah. So he said that he he came to us one day and he said, you know, I might be able to get Omi uh, on our show, you know. And uh, we're like, cool, man. Yeah, that that'd be awesome. I mean, we were just like, that was yeah, like a huge sure, Scott, thing. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then he go- <laughs> and then he says, hey, guess what? He wants to. Co- he, he's he's down to come on. So um, mm. we're just like, what? And so everybody I tell, of course, you know, they're they're very ecstatic and very excited because of the success of the Mandalorian. Um, but you're not just a uh, Mandalorian fame, you know, you, you are in American gods, right. On stars. Yeah. 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 We just, we just wrapped our third season. So Amazing. we're, we're kind of fingers crossed. We'll get a fourth, but we'll see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm about um, three episodes away from the finale right now. So I'm, I'm, Oh, you are. The okay. Yeah, I, no right. spoilers. <laughs> okay. Definitely not. No. <laughs> yeah. The last episode I saw was, uh, you at the, uh, at the boardroom table talking to Mr. World and, Whenever you're, you're, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but your character, <laughs> he puts out his business side again. And I'm like, grow some cojones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was badass. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the last, I think the last like four episodes are the best episodes of our, of our season. So I think, I think you'll be pretty happy Wonderful. with it. And feel free to text me if you have, if, let me know how you feel. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Very cool. Yeah. So, Again, we all know you as Dr. Pershing on The Mandalorian, yeah. uh, both seasons. You know, very, very shocking that you're even in season two because uh, we theory crapped the heck out of Star Wars, right? And we're like, we, your character especially, be, just because of how important it is. And we're going to get into some of that stuff. And um, to know that you came back, you know, it's funny how when we start exploring characters that we see on Star Wars, and then mm. I started studying like where you, you know, pretty much on uh, how where you've been acting and all that stuff i'm like dude this guy's been around like he's mm-hmm. been in our in our living rooms for a lot longer than mandalorian a long time looking you know? at your imd <laughs> i'm like oh yeah my gosh he's in every show i think i've ever watched my wife and i have seen you on tv all the time yeah no i've i've, I've been around yeah 20 i think almost 20 years now that's awesome so, that's, that's awesome that yeah that you know Ooh. so i i do want to ask like you know how did of course. How did you get started in this? I know you were, you said you're a theater major, right? Yeah. Well, I was actually, I was an, actually an advertising major at Cal State. Oh, okay. Wilson. And then I added, I took like an acting for non-majors class and then I fell in love with acting um, and like re- fell in love with acting again. Cause I did one year of acting in high school. Okay. And so I started doing the plays and started getting involved in the theater program and, and got a couple awards and then, uh, graduated in 2002 and, and I had a, like my first like theater job before I graduated. Right. And so I did theater for like the first year and then jumped into TV and film uh, in 2004 uh, and like 24 that, that, you know, the TV show 24 right. was 24. my second gig. And yeah, so I've been just kind wow. of been working steadily since 2004 so yeah let's, 17 let's, years let's just say for a second gig awesome. you don't get much better than 24 at that's what i'm saying 24 was pretty epic yeah it kind of yeah. jumped it jump started my career and yeah. then i was i was on a show called over there as a series regular within like you know 10 minutes from 24's airing wow. you know so wow. yeah awesome you need what? a teacher that says my second gig was on 24. 24, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first was on JAG. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. So, so okay, so you were in JAG, then you went to NCIS, which is the spinoff of J- different character, I'm assuming. Yeah, different character, yeah. And then NCIS Los Angeles. Also a different character, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah you, like I say, you've been in my living room many times. Well, I've actually been on 24 twice as two different characters. Really? Really? Yeah. Okay. One with glasses, one without. 
So. Yeah, yeah, the Clark Kent Superman thing. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, which um, that, that's yeah. funny because your character on the Mandalorian, I think it's our first character in a Star Wars universe that wears glasses. Yeah. So I, I've been told that's that. Right. Yeah, I mean, because there's goggles, right? Uh, but correct. This is. Correct. I'm I'm curious to know, and I'm curious to ever you know <laughs> if we'll ever find out if these are more than just glasses. But for the time being. Why well, I'm writing that down. There's some cool yeah. shades. I have no idea. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, right hey, now that's that, what they we help do. me see. We take <laughs> yeah. things. This is what we do. We take things like that and we'll yeah. run with five podcasts about your glasses. And, <laughs> and then it'll see this is like again, this is for the, the ultra nerds and Chris, who's another co-host yeah. of ours who can't be on today. This can get into the whole Lobot thing. Lobot wears that to, you know, the, the cybernetic, you know, all that stuff. And then yeah, tie we could tie that in. It's the six. We, we'd find I'm, a way. We I mean, find a way. who knows? I, yes. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The minute the minute we met your character on The Mandalorian, we noticed we were analyzing your uniform. We're, <laughs> I mean, and I'm sure you've heard that a million times. You know, we, we analyze and pick apart every little yeah. bit. And we're like, OK, that patch on his arm. That is a blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, truth be told, like, you know, you know, Dave Filoni, obviously. Right. He was like, hey, listen, uh, that, that patch on your arm is going to mean some things to some people. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure what he meant by that. Because, you know, I'm, I'm relatively, I'm not as well versed as you guys are by any means in the Star okay. Wars universe. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to be having this, this, this sit down with you guys right. three years after because I'm <laughs> much, I'm much more fluent now than I was awesome. three years ago. Um, but yeah, that patch, you know, there, there was significance to it. Absolutely. And, yeah. and so... That's that's all I knew at the time. And yeah, we'll, it's we'll it's one of the first things that we that I, I mean the internet Seriously. exploded because of that. Seriously, yeah. Like, yeah. Once they figured it out, and it goes back to like episode two, you know. Yeah. Uh, the clone world, well, and it was again, it, again, we did a whole, we do a whole thing. That's what we do. One little hair is that's off, and and we analyze that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's sad, really. It's, it's, sad. <laughs> oh, it's, it's sad great. You know what? We could be on the streets. You know it's what I mean? Great. So, <laughs> so. No, man, this is this is great. I have a five year old. He hasn't seen Star Wars yet, uh -huh. um, but he's seen like the Star Wars Legos. And I and I read him like the, the kitty Star Wars books. Sure. Sure. And then he has this, you know, this this trivia game that we have for adults. It's like a thousand questions. And he's memorized all thousand answers, questions awesome. and answers. Wow. So wow. he's going to be joining you guys in like 10 years time. So we, wonder we'll be that fifth box. <laughs> the sad thing is we will be here on <laughs> doing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. So full gray beard instead of salt and pepper beard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that's what we do. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, it's just one of those things, you know, just kind of roll with it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I, I do want to give you enough time to explore other works that you've done, because again, again, we could, we could really just break down star Wars all day, but um, American gods is something that you've landed. And to me, it's, it's huge. It's huge because it's an ongoing role for you, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and the concept of it, like I said, I, I was unfamiliar with American gods that it was a book before it, was, it became this. Right. Series. Were you familiar with Neil Gaiman at all? Yes. Oh, yes. Neil, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And, and that was, and I was kind of like thinking, going, I should know this. I should know the works of, of this, you know, uh, of American gods and all of that. And um, I was telling Scott this, like exploring it more because I, I, I'm new to this because of you. I've been brought into the American gods world. Like I've been exploring it more and I'm like, man, this is a, like one of the greatest concepts and it means so much to today. And that's why, of course, the series being made and all that stuff. And I, I'm sure that when it was written, it wasn't as prevalent. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, for people who don't know, it, the, the, basically the outline of the, the book and the TV show is it's <laughs> it's it's very com it's complicated to explain, <laughs> but <Exactly>. it <laughs> boils down. It's it's an immigrant story. And what I mean by immigrant is the gods who are here in America are are brought here on the backs of immigrants. Right. So you have right. a, you know, a collection of gods from all over the world, um, Norse gods, you know, Greek gods, Roman gods, Middle Eastern gods, uh, mm -hmm. Egyptian gods. So, and so, and it's very much like elf, right? So the more people worship them and the more people believe right. in them, the more powerful they are. Right. And so over time with the advent of like technology and like, there's these new gods, uh, you know, media, um, um, you know, money or whatever. Um, right. 
so more people are worshiping their cell phones and so these and forgetting about these old gods so yeah. for example you would spend Sunday watching the Super Bowl or watching a football game and not going to church, which Correct. means like the new gods are winning. So yeah. it's a very, it's a very like, I mean, it's a very like timely subject because mm -hmm. yeah. I see so many people losing themselves into their phones and yeah. their technologies. And um, it's very Nietzsche. You know yeah, I mean? it is. It is. It's yeah. not for everybody, but it's, right. it's done well. It's a very expensive show, uh, and we're, everybody who's involved is very proud of yeah. it. Yeah. You can see every dime being spent in it, though. It is so well done. The quality of it's amazing. The animation that's used, the, the special And the effects. list of actors. Yes. I mean, it's oh, like yeah. incredible. No, All-star roster. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it continues to be, so, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I'm exploring it. Like, I'm, I'm, I uh, explored season one. You know, I've, I'm, on the, I'm on the journey. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Okay. And, um, because I uh, I studied uh, Nietzsche in, in college and everything and his the death of God or the death of man. Mm -hmm. And it goes right into this where technology is the new God. You know, that's the yeah. new death of man, basically. Right. Um, and, and, it, and again, it's very psychological. It's very, you know, it's very prevalent and makes you take a step back and go. This is this is this is something that I'm doing right now, uh, exploring this world on my cell phone. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, we're and all guilty of it, but oh, it's yeah. just it's, it's nice to be mindful of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's funny you guys say that because I'm thinking, I'm, while you guys are talking about, I'm thinking about it. Like, what if my phone were to like, just <laughs> fall down and break? Yeah, how would my life be like right now? And I'm seriously. Like, yeah, but we we uh, people of our age have, have we've lived a life, you know, like pre cell phone and pre internet. Yeah. Even um, it's these new these new kids, this new generation. I don't. I'm. Yeah. No, it's true. What they're gonna turn out? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's very true. Like I said, you know, sometimes when my phone is updating for like a couple hours, you know, I, I <laughs> yeah. keep myself busy, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you're sitting there staring at it like, yeah. come on, come on, come on. Come yeah. on. <laughs> but I can put in a VHS or a DVD. <laughs> there or, you go. Uh, and uh, and then you know, pass the time. But yeah, man, it's it's um it's crazy. It's really crazy to think about. And I'm glad, I'm kind of glad that the show exists. You know, um, yeah, just to have those kind yeah. of voices you know yeah yeah um so who do you play in american gods i play uh salim uh okay. who's uh who's an immigrant from oman and uh you know he's muslim uh and he happens to be gay so he has mm -hmm. like he he comes to america and he's i mean those two things are very like in you know in direct conflict with each other yeah so he's very like when you meet him in season one he's beat down he doesn't believe in himself he, he thinks life doesn't make sense and then he right. meets this gin mm -hmm. and who kind of opens his eyes into new possibilities of you know america and like a new life you can have so so that's kind of salim's journey and it's kind of it's up and down it's yeah. like you know getting to meet these 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 new gods and these mythical figures you're like yeah. it, it, it kind of messes with his mind oh yeah so it messes with my mind watching yeah <laughs> he's one of he's yeah he's he's one of the few human beings on the show Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So. It, you're, you're that anchor for people to come in and they're seeing this world through your eyes and very sympathetic I, character. Absolutely. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, so. it, 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 um, it, it should touch a lot of people in that journey, the growing journey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, of what, like, you know, to bring in real world situations, like you said, a lot of, um, cultural differences. And then you come to America thinking, Hey, it should be different, you know? And then, Hopefully it is, you know, and that's, what yeah. the, even, like I said, it speaks, it's speaking to today's times too, you know, how we always right. take, you know, two step backwards after 10 steps forward sometimes, but right. Uh, right. So I do appreciate that. And, I, and again, your character, I think has a monumental growing experience. He does. Yes. Where he very much and, so. and where he's going and stuff. So yeah. um, I don't want to give too much spoilers away on it on American gods, you know, and everything, but again, that's, that's your main focus right now, as far as like what you've got going on. Um, yeah, yeah, but I did notice a lot of things cause I'm a, I'm a gamer. I, I, I play, uh, like I, I, so we, I've mentioned to you that, uh, I'm from the orange County, Southern California area. And I know where Irvine is. And the big thing in my mind, when you hit or say Irvine is blizzard entertainment, you know, it's right, right there. And you've done a lot of voiceover work for video games that, you know, that's, that's awesome. And I see that in, in your, uh, looking you up, it's like, it's in a, it's in a very clumped area. Like you did one and all of a sudden you got like five more gigs doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like it's like any business where like sure. you where you start working with the same people over and over again, and they're yeah. like, you know, so 
Um, I, I am, I wouldn't, I love video games. Sure. sure. I don't know if I would call myself a gamer. Uh, I mean, especially since my son's been born, I just don't have time. Right. Right. Like just recently, but I went to like Toronto, uh, to work on a a new show and I was in quarantine for two weeks Mm. and I put my headphones on and I lost myself in like ghost of Tsushima. Uh, yeah. 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 I I hate that. I, it's not that that is a bad game. I hate it because it's so hard. It's so it's not hard. that hard. <laughs> oh, I get, it depends, it depends what level you put it on. <laughs> I but, suck at it then. But, but, uh, yeah. but these like this, what people don't understand is like these games today are not the games of yesterday. Right. And right. like oh, the right. cinematic okay. experience, the storytelling that takes place, yes. I think transcends most movies these days. Absolutely. Um, oh. Like God of War or um, yeah. uh, what's another group like the, the Last of Us. Um, these mm-hmm. are I mean, these are epic you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy these. And so okay, I mean, like, would you say, would right. you say that God of War, I mean, not God of War, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, like you said, it, it, it transcends almost like into a movie. That was the cool. first game I've ever played that I, I literally got emotional in. Like, <laughs> You're I'm not going to spoil it, it yeah. towards the end because especially, yeah. and he knows what I'm talking about. The end is so emotionally, um, like you're, uh, how do you say it? What's the word for it? Anyways, you're just, you're so into it that you, it's, you feel it's the weight of the movie. story, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that's my son. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, and, and that's, it's, it's powerful. You spend, you, you, yeah. what do you watch a movie for two hours? You watch a TV show yeah. for 10 hours. You spend 40 to 60 hours on these games, investing yeah, in these characters. Yeah. Um, and just, I mean, like people were asking me like, how's Canada during my quarantine? I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you mean Japan? Because like, right. I just spent like, you know, five hours a day running around Japan. <laughs> right. Um, right. Right. So it's, it's just, it's great to be involved in like lending my voices and getting to play characters yeah. that I wouldn't necessarily get to play on camera. Yeah. That's it's, so, it's night and day difference, you know, yeah. again, but I mean, I've been playing since I was little video games. And um, like I said, I play a lot of blizzard games, you know, world of Warcraft, Diablo, yeah. all that stuff. And I, I just want to ask you, you did a couple of voiceovers in world of Warcraft. Yeah, it just says voices, but who did you play in the new the, this last expansion, Shadowlands? Was this background character or is it a? It's usually yeah. With with that with that company, they just call me and they're like, "Hey, we just need some voices." Gotcha. Okay. Um, they're usually English characters, right? Like I played, I mean, I couldn't even like in this, I, this last one I did was like this ethereal character. I don't, okay. but I couldn't tell you. I I, right, I, right. I don't play the game, so and I know it's it's a world, right? right? Right, and it's ongoing, so like I couldn't tell you who I play, but right. I, I just had to ask that because yeah, I've had a couple people ask me, oh, ask me who he played because we were trying to figure it out. You know, <laughs> if it was a major character, or, but I'm sure that you would. No, it's not that. a major character. They have me come in and they, I'll, I'll do like four characters, and they gotcha. may use like three of them. Yeah, and then of course they sometimes they put so much voice voice modulation over you can't even True. tell it's you anymore yeah. just need yeah. your yeah so yeah I, I again that was one of those check mark questions for somebody else that needed it to know if i can plug my the favorite video game i've ever sure. done uh and it, it was on ps three or four it was called spec ops the line okay it was a massive cult hit it was not a huge hit right but it is it talk about a story that messed with people's minds so if really? you get a chance i'm sure it's like five bucks somewhere sure steam it's or something no, yeah, yeah. nolan north and and uh christopher reed i believe I'm from house party right um right. so we're the three leads of that and it's, it's it's a game that it's it's like my it's like an american gods type game for me really wow yeah very very oh, passionate about it. it's very deep yeah you know that's one thing that uh, uh, as far as like commentary a lot of people say movies there's nothing, that, you know, like there's nothing to tell anymore, right? That, that's why they're doing remakes and reboots and revisioning and stuff. I said, yeah, yeah, but if you like open the gaming world, if Hollywood opens the gaming world. And they are. Yes, they are. And there's yeah. a lot of them like Bioshock and stuff that I really want them. I think they, they you mentioned Last of Us. I, they are doing a Last of Us movie. With Pedro, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, open the gaming world. There's so many more stories because you're right. It's, it is a such a more of an imagination rather than these again like rehash let's remake my living dead again right, and right. again and update it and you know it, i'm a huge horror fan because that really bugs me you know the remakes because mm-hmm. right, the, right. where the world where the remakes live is in the horror world but uh yeah <laughs> but yeah so um as long as and again it's a double-edged sword too just like star wars correct yeah if you don't do it right then you get i mean you get heat 
Resident Evil, for example, they a lot of people didn't like it because you know it's like it wasn't true to the video game. So again, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I want to kind of segue into the, the Star Wars talk again. You you uh, you play Doctor Pershing. Yeah. Um, which we introduced to you in the very first episode, and and uh, <laughs> it caused a whirlwind. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you did mention that uh, you know you you're, you're a new a newer fan, which we appreciate too because that that's how Star Wars lives, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when you got the call, did you uh, did you actively pursue something? Did you know this was happening, uh, or is it something that just felt like kind of fell mm-hmm. into? It fell from the sky. Wow. Um, yeah, I was, this the story of it is I was shooting American God season two in Toronto mm-hmm. and I wasn't very happy. We had had a showrunner switch and the new okay. showrunner didn't quite get my character in the storyline that I was involved in. And so I was spending a lot of time alone in Toronto. Uh, and I was, you know, I was miserable. And so I just remember it was a Friday night. It was 1am and I was fast, probably on my second REM cycle. Right. And I get a call from my agent. And so usually like the the actor's mind, you're like, if you get a call at 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. This is either a very bad call or a very good call. Right. Either I'm getting fired from American Gods or (laughs) something, something great's going to happen. Correct. Right. And so I was very tired. I was like, I was like, hello. And like my agents, like, it just sounded like, is it like Snoopy where the adults kind of, you can't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. they're it's saying. Like, wah, wah, wah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Wah, 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 untitled John Favreau project. Wah, 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 wah. Right. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm sorry. What? Like yeah, say, say it. it to me one more time. Yeah. He's like, they want to, uh, they want to offer you a, uh, a part on the untitled John Favreau project. And so I go on Google and I'm at my phone on my Googling and I'm like, I was like, Oh, like, they're, you mean the Star Wars TV show? I didn't even know they were making it. Right, right. He's like, yeah. I'm like, they want me to audition for it? He's like, no, no, they're offering it to you. Whoa. Wow. Like, oh. I, was like, I was like, what? Another I was shirt. Like, I didn't audition for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was, I was like, I am so sorry. This is too much for me. Can, 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 I'm, I was like, I'm sleeping. Let me hang up. I think right. this is a dream. Let's talk <laughs> in the morning and see if it's still, if it's still true. Right. <laughs> I, w- I went to bed. I really thought it was a dream. I called my agents. I was like, so did that really happen? He's like, yeah. Wow. And, and I was ecstatic yeah. and, and not so much because I was at that point, a huge fan of star Wars. I appreciated it, but like, I was a huge fan of John Favreau. Sure. sure. Like I massive, like ever since swingers to yeah. friends to chef to jungle book, I am, I, I was just, I was just ecstatic about working with him. And so, so this kind of segues into like my, my history with Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I would say the first, no, okay. So I remember in the daycare, I was involved. I, I, I was like, maybe like in third grade or fourth grade, you know, they would show different like Star Wars movies, but I was very, a very active kid and I right. would love sports. So I would always like go outside, play soccer, come in and like catch like a few minutes of whatever they were showing. Right, right. Um, so like the, the hologram scene with, uh, with princess Leia and Obi-Wan. And, uh, I remember that very, very well. And then I would sure. run out and I come back in and it's the battle of Hoth. Yeah. Uh, and it's the ATAT walkers and like, you know, doing a rope. And then I would go out and come back in. And, <laughs> right. but the, I remember there was a rainy day. Uh, so I couldn't play outside. And the first full movie I saw was the adventures of Ewoks. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I know it gets a lot of hate. No, it's coming to Disney Plus I, in April. So I, it, I <laughs> yeah. loved it. I love, yeah. love yeah. Adventures of Ewoks. And so I just, I just kind of just, it, it never, like, I never got around to like watching it, Star Wars in full until like with the, my American Gods family, like The Last Jedi came out and mm-hmm. Brian Fuller, the showrunner, was a massive Star Wars fan. Uh, he's like, let's get the let's get the cast together and let's go watch the Last Jedi. So awesome. that was the first full. I mean, I, I know it's going to anger a lot of people. No, 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 that no. was that was that was the first full movie I saw. And then wow. eventually, I got the offer for this, and I was like, all right, let's put in the work. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch everything. And so I got to binge essentially everything. Right. Uh, uh, and it's a lot to take in. Yeah. And so, but I you know, but I was able to go with you know. A relative knowledge into into Man- the Mandalorian, right? Um, but as you know, the Mandalorian, you don't need to know too much. It's it's no, a great it's a great entry point for anybody that you know. You don't necessarily have to be right. A Star and it's all Wars kind of brand new, like, Yeah, it you was know. especially that first season. 
you know? Yes. The second yes. season, you, st- you started to see that the galaxy got smaller and smaller and people came in from like the Clone Wars and, you know, are we right. allowed to give that? Can you talk? Yeah. I have friends oh, yeah. who are still watching The Mandalorian now. Oh, really? No, we- like a friend last <laughs> night, he's like, they brought back Luke Skywalker. I'm like, how did you, how did you not know that? We did a, yeah, we, yeah, we, we usually do like a, um, like if a premiere on Friday, we give it like the weekend and then we're full blown and we, we sure, of course we say, you know, spoilers, all that stuff, but no, everybody that's the, the listens to us in the podcast world, as they know, that, they're fully caught up now. Oh yeah. If, oh, yeah. if, if I'm spoiling anything, for no, you, no, no, it's, no, it's no, on no. you, right? I've you got don't... friends. I've got yeah. friends that came up to me within the last year and told me, Whoa, Vader <laughs> yeah. is Luke Skywalker's father, and I'm like, yeah. within, Where have you been within, for 40 the, within the last year, wow. and these are like grown wow. men. Yeah, yeah. Um, only, yeah. You can only spoil it if you tell us you're in season three. That's all. I mean, you see, like, that I, just, I can't even tell you that that they are so tight lip on that show. Sure, sure, sure. That <laughs> even like I, I will tell you, even when I get my lines, it's just my lines. Yeah, uh, I, I don't uh, know what the episode is. 100. percent yeah. So, I, you know, if I, you know, I would listen, I would I would rip off my my warm up outfit and jump on the court as fast as they call my name. Yeah. Uh, but it's really up to them. Absolutely. And just like in any other show, you know, if, as long as you're not dead, there's always that possibility. So, yeah, yeah. fingers it, crossed. But yeah, I know it, they also have like a lot of things going on at the same time with some other projects that they're doing. Oh, 100 percent. And and, yeah. and when it comes to spoilers, too, is like uh, me personally, I don't know. Like I said, I, I maybe Joey, I don't know. But I know Scott's like this with me. We even if you had a spoilery thing to tell me, I would be like, I I, I want to yeah. see it. I need to see it. That it's those minor things, right? Like, you know, yeah. Is yeah. an action figure of Dr. Pershing coming. That's Gosh, see, that would have been my re- my first response to that call, right? Like <laughs> or a like, Lego. Like, I mean, like, oh, it's it's got to be coming. So. We're we avid collectors. You yeah, know, and I can we're see. Like, <laughs> that, that's one of those things, you know, I'm like, okay, because your character, and we talked about the patch, right? That the first thing that we talked about your role at, and when you first got introduced is, is the patch and it became, you're a clone scientist or you work for right. cloners or something like that. Yeah. And that brought up a whole line talk for us. And we, we, oh, we went off. We went stuff. for weeks. We're Did like, you really? Oh, yeah. We were like, okay, Just so if he's that. a cloner. Yeah. If he's a cloner, does that mean that, that uh, he wants the now Grogu child. is... Uh, uh, uh. Grogu must be a clone. No, wait, Grogu's not a clone. He's trying to get the DNA yeah. to make a new emperor. Yeah, yeah. right. These are, these are all great questions, but like I promise you, they do not tell. Oh, right. at course. least no. I mean, I, I'm sure if I was like one of the you know like first or you know first primary characters, Dave Filoni, you know, I mean, he's yeah. making this. So, you know, if you're yeah. if you're John Favreau, yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, so. It, when you became, when you, I didn't even know, like I said, I, I thought that was kind of like a, a one and done character for season one, you know? And then when yeah. you showed up as a hologram in season oh, two no. and you drop, you're dropping lines like the host and stuff like that. And I'm like, I, I, it's like one of those things where, and I was telling I, yeah. Scott this too. It's like, you know, your character means in this, in the plot, like the subplots and the main plots of, of the Mandalorian, your character is in the most important. The, yeah. the most important because it ushers in this it's it's directly involving the sequel trilogies it's directly involving the emperor the cloning DNA, well it does kind of tie it ties in the prequels with the, the sequels right like, yeah. yeah 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 uh, absolutely so it's and again it's because when the last movie the the last jedi came oh not jedi um the rise of skywalker, rise of skywalker came out you know we we found out the emperor is a clone and or you know his clone body and stuff like that and then with the mandalorian to us again to us, we're it's we're putting it in. Line. We're weaving the story in, and we're right. going like that. And your character is directly involved in it in our minds. And I, again, future happens where it could be nothing. Oh, we, we're wrong all the time. Trust us. Sure. Know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Ninety percent like, of the time, we're wrong. <laughs> yeah. But but it's so much fun. But it's part of the fun, this, right? Yeah. yeah. Coming up with all the theories, you know. It's just, I love it's reading amazing, like so. fan theories. Like it's yeah. like. I've, I've 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 seen a few on twitter which is really the only place i i see things um yeah and i can tell you like it was fun to watch the m count uh oh. that that the word m count like set people off yeah. mind <laughs> blown there's, yeah. a, there's a guy that listens to our show and he he's he's he works in the jedi archive or the lucasfilm archives and stuff and and uh, i remember when the last episode hit or even some of the key episodes he would text me he goes i couldn't wait for you guys to you know get down on this and and i said i go well and i asked him i said in our theory and when we do our podcast how how much are we on the spot you know, how much are we on the money he goes he goes sometimes you guys are way out left field but it's fun to hear 
And yeah. then sometimes when you're right on, it gets scary because they're like, wait a second. How do what? they know this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I, I always, I like to think that the people involved in, in Lucasfilm and the, the story are, are, are us like yeah. they're the same mind, like the whole hive mind. Like we all kind of um, do that again. And I do want to welcome you into the star Wars fandom because thank you. Yeah. yeah. We're going to, hopefully get a uh, action figure out of this. I Gotta hope get that one. you're yeah. going to see you at conventions. You know, you know, it's just those, it's just, you're part of it now. It, it, there's no turning back. <laughs> it's you guys, it's like, it's, it's the biggest. I remember the, it's like winning the lottery. Like oh, mm, it's, it's good. worth more than any amount of money. Like to Absolutely. be in something this cool and to be like, I had so, so many people from my life, like from my childhood to now, reached out to me because they saw The Mandalorian. Yeah. I heard from my teachers from fifth grade. Wow. Like, do you, do you understand? Like, I mean, that, you, can't yeah. put, you can't put a, like a monetary value on that. Right. Yeah. And, no, and you're you, cemented in history. You are cemented in history. Like, we, you know, when these yeah. things come out, when the, when the movies come out, we're always like, good or bad, it happened. In our yeah. minds, I mean, this is almost like, I mean, yes, like, Yes, mom. I know it's a movie. Okay, I I, I know I got to do, this. but still at the same time, these things happen in our world. Our our getaway, our galaxy far, far away. It's been that since we were childhood to now. Yeah. And again, it, everything is cemented into this. That's why we take everything so serious. Like any dialogue, a patch, a, a, a misplaced hair. We're like, whoa, that's yeah. gotta, you know. Um. <laughs> so yeah. But just the the reach, though, like you're saying, your fifth right. grade teachers reaching out to you, saying, "I mean, did you even know your fifth grade teacher?" Oh yeah, okay, sorry, not my fifth grade teacher. It was okay. like my fifth grade teacher died. <laughs> I'm okay. so sorry. <laughs> I was just, I was just using an example. It was probably right. like right ninth grade or something. Okay. Like, yeah, Let me ask yeah. you this: Did you ever get to hand actually handle Grogu? Uh, yeah, I, I held him the very, the very first day I, I went in, um, it was to meet John and Deborah was, was the director of my right. episode, which she happened to be, she directed, she had just directed me on American gods. Oh wow! And that's wow. just one of those things. Like, yeah. coincidentally, I was like, what are the, like, I went into this, we were having a cast dinner with American gods. I was like, hey, Deborah, I need to talk to you. And she's like, what's up? I'm like, I think I'm going to be on the show you're working on. Nice. And she's like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, and so, so yeah, so the first day when I went in to see Deborah and like, they, they're like, do you want to meet your co-star? I was like, sure. And they're like, um, <laughs> they're here, come here a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the real thing, but this is, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, very yeah. close. Um, they're like, here's like, here's, here's your co-star. And, <laughs> and I immediately like fell in love with them. Oh, sure. I'm like, please don't make me be evil with this, this, yeah. this being like, I don't, I don't have the heart. Hey, right, right. hey. one sideshow, right? Yes. <laughs> it, it was so hard for me to buy anything else after yeah, seeing man. the real thing. Oh, yeah. I know. And then, and then sideshow kind of came through and, yeah. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. Were you, exactly. Speaking uh, on that, were you relieved to find out that your character didn't really want to hurt Grogu? I mean, it's, it's yeah. The, the thing about my character is like, it's it's not black. He's not black. It's not black and white. Correct. Correct. And that's that's the way I love it. Right. Like watching the, the shows when I was preparing for the role. So many of these, uh, you know, imperial characters hit their line, hit their mark, right. and bark their lines. Right. Yes. yes. That that just didn't appeal to me. But like someone like Galen Urso, like right. Mm. I was like, oh, now that. Hundred like, percent. Yeah. That that's what I was like, and and that's out of my hand. But right. that is something right, I right, hope. Right. You know, that that he's kind of like my inspiration of like there is more than meets the eyes to these people. Yeah. Who who may work, you know, with the Empire. So, yeah, and, and we've discussed that too, saying like yeah. Dr. Pershing is we we always say he's not imperial because you're because of the character's attitude towards what he's doing. It's more scientific, it's more for the research. And and I'm I know he's working for we we get that he's working for a higher power in season two and stuff. And um, but there's something about it that like with, with Werner Herzog's right his character yeah yeah one sure he's he's my he's he's so he's the really I love him he's yeah. so good and you got to work with him you know? yeah it's, yeah it's, his voice is so iconic and uh yeah um just just how you said they're black and white and you had a different motive and we and we always thought like 
again, this is getting to real you know, Star Wars geekdom stuff, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I always say be careful about humanizing the imperial or the empire because they're supposed to be the oppressed bad people. So if you start humanizing them too much, then you become sympathetic. Then the blur, the lines between good and evil blur, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, but I appreciated your stuff because, it, or the, you know, your stuff and the characters is the scientific value of it. Mm -hmm. And you were in that character. You were like, I need him alive. I, I wasn't going to hurt him. And you right. had that, that preservation thing, you know, yeah. in confronting and stuff. So it's a different take on it, which is like something that we haven't seen in Star Wars before. And it was like, right. this is refreshing. And, and uh, yeah, like I said, your character is 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 a bigger than life character on the mandalorian it is uh it means a lot you. you know Thank without you. Yeah. without the character um and your performance by the way so <laughs> it, and and um, it just it's it's a whole different show without it you know what i mean so um i can't wait to you can head nod if you have no <laughs> i can't wait um no i, I <laughs> where the story goes you know what i mean because i i know they can. i yeah i mean like yeah. i would like for me as an actor i would of course i would love to it would oh, definitely sure. inform me on my choices but yeah. you know a project like this you know yeah. and a character like this you're kind of flying blind and kind you of are, going moment to moment and saying oh oh Oh, this is new information. I wish I knew like last season. Yeah. <laughs> but, but right, um, correct. But correct, but you know. but that you know that's the case with a lot of different projects. But sure. I'm, I'm just I'm just just happy to just be a part of it. You yeah. know, like I said, and, you're cemented in history at this point. Um, yeah. it, even if it's season three, like your name is mentioned, it's still right. a huge deal. Mm -hmm. It's still <laughs> a huge deal because when we do get your action figure, you know, we 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 put it in and we have it. You know. Or you let Scott know if you get a phone call for the Snyder Cut for uh for the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> you get a phone call for, that? for sure. That's funny. Um. Oh, you know, I I, I do want to touch on this real fast. Um. Speaking of like DC. Oh yeah. man, Scott. Oh yeah, yeah. Scott oh, has a question for you. I do. Yeah. So uh, number one, one of my absolute all-time favorite comic book characters is Hawkman. Get out. <laughs> and here yeah. I'm seeing you're gonna be. Uh, you're voicing Hawkman in just in World War II, Justice Society, World War II. Yeah, Justice Society is my favorite super really? team. So really? Yeah. This yeah. I, I saw that on your IMDb IMDb page, and I just started geeking out. And I yeah. cannot wait for this movie. How did this role come about? This was also another offer, um, and it came beca because I knew the the casting director. I had worked with the casting director, who was also the voice director. Um, uh, for the project on a different project. Okay. And so I, I, and I, I knew, I was somewhat familiar with like Star Wars going into Star Mandalorian. I knew nothing about right. any soup, like DC Marvel. I didn't, I don't know much about it. Right. Um, and Hawkman, when I was, I was offered it. And so like, I went to go research it and you know, Scott, mm. like this is the most confusing thing to like jump into because how many different versions of right, Hawkman are there? Or how many different backstories does he have? And I was like, this, it was just like, it was messing with my mind. But, um, <laughs> but again, like, just like, just like with Mandalorian, I fell in love with it. Like I, I fell in love with the Star Wars universe. And then I fell in love with Hawkman and the potential for his, his storylines going forward. And there, you know, maybe, maybe they'll have me back voice and more. But that's definitely not a character I'll be playing on screen anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I'd have to pause this and start doing some push-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. He is massive. No, yeah, he's things, massive. Yeah. One of the yeah. things I love about Hawkman is you're right. He's got all of those different histories. And yet, through the magic of comic books and over time, they've been able to actually make every single one of those histories count. Yeah. Because the the over the thousands of years that he's been reincarnated... <laughs> And yeah. it's just there. I, I cannot imagine getting that call. You're going to be Hawkman. And then, okay, I'm going to do some research. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Where do I yeah. start? Exactly. And you can't call up your friends and ask about it because there's an NDA. Right. You know? Right. So, um, so yeah. Exploration there. Yeah. Yeah. Scott gave me the breakdown and I, my mind was like, yeah. Oh, okay. We we were stuck in a, in a three hour car ride on the 15 freeway coming home <laughs> from Disneyland. Do. As you, and, do. as you do yeah and, I, and for that three hours i was just like here's the story of hawkman and how it ties to dr fate and black adam and all yeah wow yeah 
You guys were yeah. coming back from Disneyland. This was uh, downtown, downtown Disney. Disney. Yeah. Oh, downtown Disney. Yeah, I was downtown, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I had to buy a lightsaber. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. wait. You know. Have but, yeah. Have you been to Batu? Have you been to Disneyland since they opened Star Wars World? Uh, I have I have been to Disneyland, but no, I wasn't able to get into uh, to Gal- the Galaxy's oh, Edge. Edge. No, right. I'm dying, dying to go. I'm dying to take my son. Oh, you're, you're gonna have um, to go incognito, man. Yeah, uh, you're gonna recognize. Don't quick. wear glasses. I, I mean, I'm, I I was I mean I was there when the Mandalorian first there. I I don't get recognized too much for for the Mandalorian. Funny enough, really, really? it's really? mostly American gods. I'm sure if I put on my sunglasses, maybe. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, but um. But yeah, no, I'm just I'm dying to show them that we've just been oh, YouTubing. You know how like Disney's been so good about putting up all these like special YouTube yes. uh, videos during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So you know we've been doing that and kind no, of exposing my son to that. I'm hoping, like I said, uh, we were going almost almost weekly. You know, up until the closure. So and it's been that where it's like the world stopped. You know, and um, yeah, yeah. Speak, uh, just real, just real fast. Speaking on our you being an actor it's hard because everything's shut down so yeah i would i would assume voice work would have been a lot more you know like you were getting hit up for voice work a lot more too i did some voice work for my closet but i don't have the equipment right nor the huge drive to like right. i have a small home and i have like a five-year-old and a wife who are both right. here so right. i can't be like hey you guys i need to be completely silent Correct. for four yeah. hours i understand that yeah so i mean i did some voiceover um, but that was one of the first things that opened up in person because you can Got go it. into a booth by yourself and it's completely safe. Right. right. And then I had my first on-screen job uh, the f- in, in December in Canada. And then I just have been going back and forth for a project I can't talk about from to Texas, Austin. Right. That's so. that's season three, uh, Mandalorian. By the way, he's- <laughs> yeah, we're just we're just a bunch of cowboys. I know, I know. Now I it's really a space what? cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're you're just gonna keep throwing that out there, man. <laughs> It's so exciting. It's just you so can't exciting. you can't crack me because I don't have the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. That's at the top of the NDA. Says, Tell everybody you just don't know. Uh, yeah. no, let, me ask, let me ask we, you this. I'm yeah. asking everyone this question. Okay. Yeah. You got Team Godzilla or Team Kong? <laughs> uh, oh, Kong. Kong. Yeah. Yeah. I have a huge affinity for that original King Kong movie. Yeah, the black and white one. Oh, so yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic. It's so I have to I have to be Iconic. Team Kong. It, yeah. Well, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny to because again, this is this is what we do, right? This is when we stand in line and we just kind of like, I mean, we geek out on every aspect. It's funny how like King Kong lives in our heart because he's got a lot more empathy, he's got more passion. Mm-hmm. Godzilla yeah. though, <clears throat> just Godzilla wreaks havoc. A new one, <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, I mean, that's so. like a, a Godzilla's overpowered. There's nothing King Kong to me. That he can, but I'm so I'm anxious to see. I think there's a little there, there's gonna be a lot of holding back, but uh, um, but yeah, King Kong to me is is I like him more because he's like I said, more empathetic, yeah, and he has a human monster. aspect of him, right? right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, but uh, what? You, don't seem, you don't see you don't seem happy with that answer, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, oh, a guy, he's a Godzilla yeah. fan, okay, yeah. fair, fair enough, you know, <laughs> it says a lot about somebody. Yes. I'm just kidding. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, again, I, I, uh, I, we, we could drag this out. I mean, I could sit there and then and, and talk to you, you know, just, just geek out on, on every aspect. So um, American Gods season three is out. Everybody go check that out. Please get, get caught up. And like, I'm getting caught up on it. So yeah. I'm, I'm really anxious on it. And, and again, it's opened this just amazing world um, on paper. It's amazing. On, in, in live action, it's amazing. The cast is amazing. Uh, so please go check that out. Omid, thank you very, very much for your time. Um, where can we find you? Like if you want anybody to explore your works or you have a website? I mean, the only, I mean, there's always IMDB and okay. uh, the only pl- place so- on social media that I'm at is uh, Twitter. Okay. Like I, I have an Instagram, but I, I stopped using Instagram because I didn't want the new gods to win. Nah, um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I stopped using Instagram like years ago. So <laughs> Twitter, Twitter is really the only place. That awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Again, thank you for your time. Uh, thank hopefully, you guys. hopefully that we can have you back anytime. Like if uh, absolutely, even, even if you get more into DC and you know we, we in our last podcast that uh, we even kind of broke down Justice League, the Snyder Cut. I mean, it, it, on a Star Wars podcast, yeah, a little bit, you know, ten minutes here or whatever. Right, so right. again, well, that's that's what we do. We can't help it, you know. Anything yeah. you ever want to plug, just let us know, and yeah, you're more than sure. welcome. So um, hopefully yeah. we could do this again too. And good luck to you, and be safe out there, right? And I'm hoping that 
it's opening up more so more opportunities to for movies to hit, come back and disney yeah. plus and all that's good stuff yeah so. i would i would love to be disney's i would love for disney i, w- I would put on those mickey ears i want to yeah. be owned by disney so much like i'm such a huge <laughs> fan of them yeah. they own us so. trust me. <laughs> yeah. i've bought and i I've, i have bought i know I, at least a brick on disney's lot like at least that brick i have put so much money into that. i i, I think i own that yeah <laughs> <laughs> all well, right awesome, guys. guys um yeah Let's 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 get out of here. Uh, this was amazing. This was a lot of fun. There's a lot yes. of anticipation leading up to this too. Again, so um, anytime that we can get somebody from you know the direct line of our love, it's it's just an amazing experience. So um, I'm very I'm, appreciative of that love, by the way. Like oh, it's perfect. like for, I, mean, I know I know like the of the fandoms yeah. that I have come across in my my career. Star Wars up here, everything else be, yeah. like the second you know it's just like and I know it's a very like passionate. Sure, and, sure. And that's oh, what yeah. makes it kind of intimidating going into it, right? Yeah. Because people are so knowledgeable. And that's why I have to be very upfront with people that like, I'm take it easy. I'm, I'm relatively <laughs> yeah. new. But my, the love is there and my intent is there. Oh, yeah. And yes. I'm raising my son into this generation. Perfect. I hope people appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. absolutely. And, you know, like I said, with, with Star Wars fans, we could get heated with each other and we could just, you know, there's some out there that can destroy things and stuff. But, you know, we keep it positive. I think Disney keeps it positive. I can't wait yeah. till the Star Wars celebration next year. Uh, when we get when we meet up in Anaheim, I'm 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 Man. Just, you know I'm just... maybe I'll see you there. Oh, oh yeah. man, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I know this last one was supposed to happen. It, it was broke supposed my to heart happen. when it didn't happen. Yeah. I know. I, I've been to many celebrations. I and I always tell people that are conflicted with Star Wars fandom because you know internet could be mean, right? Mm-hmm. I said go to a celebration, and and then there'll be nothing more to say. That's it. Yeah. Just go to a celebration. That's that's the epitome of Star Wars fans. <sighs> Yeah, let's crush this virus so we can we can do it in person. Hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent. So, with that, again, Scott, thank you for joining me. Where can we find you? Uh, you just look for me, the Art of Scott Solo, on Twitter and Instagram, and mm. uh, you know, and our social media, our Facebook accounts, uh, the Sarlacc Digest Central. Cool, so, cool. yeah, awesome, Joey Bootleg Joe. Thanks for joining us today. You can find me here at the Sarlacc Digest on Facebook, and you can find me on Instagram uh, at bootleg Joe underscore seven six zero. Awesome! Again, Omid, thank you very much. I will. Thank you guys. Yeah, um, we'll be in touch, man. We'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch, especially when that action figure comes out. Oh, Come yeah. on, Hasbro! Yeah, <laughs> yeah fingers crossed. Come yeah. on, Hasbro! Hasbro, yeah. Hot Toys, something. I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah. I'll awesome. buy it. Awesome. Uh, with it. that, Scott, take us keep out. it nerdy, everybody.